Hello, but hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very short episode of CSK News. As always, all of today's stories are time marked down below. Let's hop into our first one, though, all about VGO skins and apparently Valve trying to shut down the entire operation. Now, if you guys are well aware of this, we've talked about this in a couple of videos in the past. Apparently, VGO has been shut down for the time being and will be back in the next few months or trying to actually come into fruition in the next few months. They are currently running. I'm not sure if the competition will be shut down anytime soon or if they'll keep it going. They're actually running a $50,000 competition for the first 50 skin designs the community brings in because if you guys are well aware of. of course they can't use CSGO skin designs on their pictures or their images due to copyright issues so it's pretty much going to be CSGO skins away from CSGO you cannot equip them in the game itself but when you go on websites like OP skins or gambling sites the picture that shows up that will be exactly what you own so running a competition in a very smart fashion the first 50 skins that are actually sent in that they do decide will receive a 5% commission of the skin sales that skin does receive so they're of course getting the community involved you know what kind of cool skins do you want to think you actually have although it is kind of weird because it's away from CSGO so these skins cannot be equipped in any game out there for the time being so it is a bit weird although it might look cool on screen it's really not it's not really what it says it is you can't equip it in game you can't use it to your to your own advantage in any other way besides gambling and I do also want to stress as well the VGO situation was not going to help CSGO player base at all it's not going to solve our issues over here but for all of you gamblers out there it is probably going to be a solution to the seven day trade ban which I do still find to be very unfair by Valve initiating that about a month and a half or a little over a month ago so it would solve that issue but for the time being we also have thanks to ZDK actually sending me these tweets on screen we first have Nancy and again I actually love Nancy as well I'll link both their Twitters down below they actually did realize that yes OP skins has deleted their initial post their partnership post with VGO this is a huge announcement because of course OP skins the largest marketplace out there to buy and sell these skins and definitely would be a hefty partner for them to have apparently that post has now been deleted I think the main reason why was because the initial launch for this was going to be the 21st of May a week ago uh, actually last month Monday as well that did not of course it failed to come to fruition by then and after talking to several owners out there it does seem it's pretty accurate it's going to take a few months for them to actually come back and yes VGO has made their own announcement they've actually had some issues with Steam mainly aka Valve on initiating this whole thing so it does seem it's gonna be quite a few months before this thing comes to fruition and actually affects the gambling scene out there which again it's not gonna be a huge loss the player base base is still decreasing this is not gonna solve that issue no matter what again it's a pretty much a CSGO platform for skins away from CSGO so even if VGO does work out I don't expect it to actually help the game out much and in super sad news it does seem Tempo Storm has made an official change that new roster on screen for all of you HS Lowell and Fox among others on that new roster which we have not seen much of ever since that roster did form but when it comes to minor qualifiers for the face it major they definitely have a really good shot coming out of their region especially with a powerful roster like that and of course you cannot do that kind of thing you cannot actually go to minor qualifiers or minors or any step of the process for qualifying for a major if you have a vac band player on your roster and unfortunately enough first time in a long time if not ever we now have a VAC band coach being fired from a position or stepping down from his position at Tempo Storm and that will be their coach Draku not connected to just one but actually two VAC band accounts now I do want to clarify as well the entire team and the staff over there did clarify through the actual recruitment process they had no idea of course they had no idea he was actually connected to VAC band accounts and very very sad news to hear quote unquote they were interviewing I believe it was actually Ricardo or Fox and, they, and he pretty much said that once the coach Draku knew that they actually had found out he pretty much stepped down and said he knew his time with them was over so it's very very sad to see this kind of thing of course um, it's kind of a, a, a two-sided argument here should you have a VAC band coach a coach that obviously will not be cheating anymore in the future he cheated maybe in the way 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 in the past uh, is is it fair to kick a coach because he has a VAC band history in this case you, you would say probably it, it is fair but it definitely is a sadder story to see because this guy now in the future you have to imagine as a coach with a connected history and a publicized connected history to VAC band accounts, he will likely never get a position as a coach ever again in CSGO because what team with any potential to make a major would actually want to sign him because feasibly they just can't do it. So it's very, very sad to see this guy's whole world has been shook up just because of his past with the VAC. So if any of you guys have a, a future, if you want to be involved in CSGO pro, uh, being a pro player, being a coach, a manager, whatever it might be, do not cheat. It could really screw yourself over for the future. So that was definitely a sad story. And also linked down below is a video by Sempus. Sempus is an ex-Splice member. of That's the North American organization who did kind of struggle and disband it just about a month and a half ago, I believe, or just some short while ago due to financial issues. Uh, they will continue in other, other organizations out there, other teams out there. But unfortunately for their CSGO team, it just was not enough feasibly to continue on. Now we actually had Sempus for the... We don't see this too often. A player coming forward and actually discussing exactly what happened inside the team. I'll link his first video down below. It did end very abruptly. 
abruptly. So I think a part two video is coming soon. I will link that in the future, but it's really cool to actually, you know, look at the inside of a team and see the struggles of a smaller organization out there. The first one that Sempis discusses on ex extensive uh, notes is actually, of course, the financial struggles of being forced to have players fit roles that were not their initial roles because they couldn't afford other buyouts to actually afford to salary other players up. And again, it was just a really kind of a hard story to hear as well because when you know when you think of a team like Splice, you think of maybe back to 2015, 2016, I believe it was the MLG Columbus. It was one of those uh, major qualifiers where they stepped in and, and actually, unfortunately, uh, they made the major. I, I say unfortunately because they made the major and then uh, they got dominated and of course they were kind of the laughing stock of that. That's what you first think of, but you never think of the financial struggles between these players having to play with players they maybe don't want to play with. And it was kind of a very, very cool video to see, but also kind of disheartening video to see the struggles of not being a top organization. It's really kind of cool to see that any small teams out there make it to a top 20 team because it's got to be an insanely difficult road. But the more important issue about the story lies in the management of Splice and how they communicated with this team. Now, first off, I do want to clarify, and Sempest did as well in his video, that there was a financial focus on other teams out there inside of the Splice organization, which did make sense. He clarified that it made sense. Of course, whatever teams you have, in this case, their League of Legends team, whatever pulls in the most viewership, the most money, you know, financially wise, you need to focus on that team. So it did make sense to a certain extent, but very disappointing in the fact that the way they communicated with this team when it came to the end of ESL Pro League season. To also give you guys note, ESL Pro League for these teams, whether they're cut or on their own or with an organization, is a huge, a huge thing for these guys in terms of a little bit of a stable income, especially uh, what orgs are looking for, a at least a little bit. You know, of course, they're looking for other spots and other qualify. You got to qualify for big tournaments, but when it, when it comes to having an ESL Pro League spot, it's very important for actually looking for an organization. And it came down to within 24 hours of these guys, that being the Splice roster in their last two matches for ESL Pro League against Cloud9, that yes, they were told they were going to be cut. Now, here's where the big issue actually is because they can no longer change players. Actually, I think uh, Sempest did clarify it's either within 24 hours or within 48 hours. You need to actually make a player change to have that player be on the roster for those matches. And when it came to ESL Pro League these last two matches, if they 2 0 Cloud9, they kept their ESO Pro League spot. Now, also, they were told within 24 hours they were going to be cut. If the team had known this, they would have probably actually cut Exotic on that roster. So, if they would have known they would not have an organization any longer, they would have cut Exotic. He, he seemed to be the least favorable person on this roster, but also he had visa issues. We talked about this a long time ago. It was actually Steele who called him out on Twitter and said, It is the most obvious thing to get. You must have a visa. It lasts for 10 years. Go to apply for it. But Exotic had no visa for this and therefore could not actually make the last two matches against Cloud9. They would have kicked him anyway and replaced him with Opera Ricky. Ricky actually had no organization or offer at the time, and he would have been a much better replacement than the player they had to replace Exotic with, which was their coach. So I hope you guys are following me. Because of Splice waiting within the 24-hour period to tell these guys they were going to be kicked, they could not actually uh, you know, formally kick Exotic. They couldn't replace their coach on time. They could not actually bring in Ricky, the better player. Uh, many of you guys are well aware, when you play with a coach, you're, it's a downgraded player. I mean, some coaches out there can pull off some miraculous things, but in this case, most likely not. So because of Splice having a lack of communication, and you probably know, now we don't know for certain, but it's most likely that the team knew, the organization knew they were going to kick this CSGO team well before that 24-hour period. So it was kind of a just a, a dirty move by them, not necessarily their fault. Maybe they didn't know about this kind of stuff, but you know, as an organization, you probably should know this. So they actually played with their coach. They, they beat Cloud9 the first map and then barely lost the second map, and therefore they were sent to ESL Pro League relegation. Now, very lucky for this story, they went to relegation and actually kept their spot. So x Splice still has the ESL Pro League spot. Thank goodness for them, because otherwise it'd be a much bigger story, but it's just the fact that organization out there would not communicate this kind of thing. In the future, we hope it doesn't happen. Maybe spread awareness by you know sharing this story. But on top of that as well, we now have X-Splice looking for a sponsor because they have now been cut, in their eyes, kind of unfairly. You know, Of course, just an abrupt period. Within 24 hours, they're let, they're let go. Um, so unfortunately enough, they will be looking for sponsors in the future. And as of right now, we'll be Launder's clothing company known as Boxer. I will link them down below for all of you. He is a temporary sponsor for that team as they do go forward and actually compete as well. So I cannot wait to see how these guys do. I hope they stick together. But as we can see by the story, the financial uh, feasibility of this is just, it's far-fetched. I wish I could support myself. Unfortunately, just uh, kind of financially struck here. But it's great to see per a person like Launders and Boxer, the company, his clothing company, actually reach out to support these guys. And we hope to see a communication issue like that never happen again to pro players. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, just some small news. It was very expected. We do have G2 actually benching Mixwell. He will be let go. And uh, unfortunately enough, he'll be looking for other offers out there, but I'm sure also in good news, uh, it's, you know, he's not going to
going to have any issue finding a team out there. And this does pretty much certify he will, of course, not be a part of the next G2 roster, which we all know is going to happen at least sometime very, very soon. Now, very lastly as well, for all of you, got, all of you lucky people out there who got a hold of the foil or any of Vanguard stickers out there, their old sticker, their only sticker on the market right now will be their last sticker uh, of that design. They have a new design launched uh, just a couple days ago, and it will look like that on screen. I do have to say, they are very, very good when it comes to logos. It still looks very cool in my opinion, and I cannot wait to see that in a sticker. As always, it's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. Thank you guys all for watching. Please leave a comment down below. I will try my best to reply today. Hope you guys all have a great rest of your day or night, wherever you guys are around the world, and I will see you all very soon. Uh, <laughs> Goodbye.